The alkali metals are the group 1 elements, except for hydrogen. Hydrogen is at the top of group 1, but it is not considered to be an alkali metal because it's a nonmetal. In fact, sometimes hydrogen, the box that contains hydrogen's information on the periodic table, is uh, set up above a little bit separate from the rest of the group 1 elements. Uh, the alkali metals uh, tend to get a charge of 1 plus or plus. In other words, the alkali metals tend to lose one electron. And for that reason, it's very easy to, to lose one electron. And so the alkali metals are very, very reactive. The alkaline earth metals are the group 2 elements. These tend to lose two electrons. And of course, you should have learned in your study of atomic structure why it is that the group 2 elements tend to lose two electrons, because they want to have the same electron configuration as a noble gas. So that's a story that hopefully you've heard already, so I'm not going to go into it. But the group 2 elements, the alkaline earth metals, tend to lose two electrons, and thus tend to attain a charge of 2 plus. They're not quite as reactive as the alkali metals. If we move almost all the way to the other end of the periodic table, to group 17, we call these elements the halogens. They tend to gain one electron and thereby attain a charge of 1 minus. Uh, because it's fairly easy to gain just one electron, the halogens are very reactive. The noble gases are all the way on the right side of the table. They're the last group, group number 18. And noble gases don't gain or lose any electrons. Um, and for that reason, they don't react with other elements uh, very well at all. In fact, uh, they're called the noble gases because back in the day, there were two classes of people the nobles, and then the rest of us. And there wasn't a lot of interaction between the nobles and the rest of us. And that's kind of how noble gases are. They don't interact. They don't react with other elements. At the bottom of the table, we have the lanthanides and actinides. These are the two rows that are set below the main body of the periodic table. The lanthanides and actinides are the elements that have f orbitals in them. The coinage metals are group 11. These are the elements copper, silver, and gold. And they're called coinage metals because these were the first metals that were used in currency. The transition elements uh, are also called the D block. Uh, these elements have various charges. Some of these elements <coughs> excuse me, lose one electron, some will lose two, some lose three. We'll go into that another day. But the D block is also called the transition elements. And then finally, the main block or representative elements are the S and P blocks together. The S and the P block together are called the main block or representative elements. And they're called the representative elements because if you take the elements in the S block and the P block, they represent the full range of elemental properties. So let's show you visually where all of these different clusters of elements are. Hydrogen, of course, is in the upper left corner of the table. Below hydrogen, the rest of the group 1 elements are called the alkali metals. The alkaline earth metals are group 2. The halogens are way over uh, near the right side of the table, group 17. The very far group on the right is the noble gases. The lanthanides are the top row of the two rows that are set below the main body of the periodic table, and the actinides are the bottom of those rows. The coinage metals are group 11, copper, silver, and gold. The transition elements 
are also called the D block. Now, the coinage metals, which here are in green, are also transition elements. But we give them a special name because they kind of have a special place in history, being the first elements that we used in uh, coining currency. Of course, the metal we met in an earlier lesson, the little stair step between the non-metals on the right and the metals to the left. Up here then we have a few more non-metals and down here we have a few more metals. And finally, the main block elements said on the previous slide are the S and P blocks. So I've used hatching to indicate where the main block or representative elements are. The S block here and the P block there. Together those are called the main block or representative elements.